uh, from Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology. Uh, he did his uh, PhD from IIT Kharagpur in 2006. And since then, he has been working as a scientist at uh, Wadia Institute. Uh, his research interest includes meso and micro scale structures, along with the metamorphic evolution of crystalline rocks found in the various segments of the Himalayas. He has also an interest in two-tone emplacement, anataxis, melt migration, and mineralogical and petrological aspects of alkaline and ultramafic rocks. With this very short introduction, as uh, Dr. Shen suggested, uh, the your Dr. Shen, please fire up your presentation. And thanks uh, a lot. Presentation. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot, Jyotimoy. I'll start. So now it is in uh, a slide mode, presentation mode. I hope it is visible to all of you. Uh, it is visible and uh, everything is okay, fine. Fine. Go ahead. So first of all, I will like to thank Jyotimoy and also interact with you. Now, this uh, the work that I am going to present is a part of a uh, sponsored project by Ministry of Earth Science. It is also part of the PhD work of Ms. Alasri Day. Uh, basically, it's her work. I am just uh, stealing her uh, thunder. And of course, Professor M. Montani, who helped me with the EBSD analysis. And this work basically gave me an opportunity to work with him after like 15, uh, 15 16 years since my PhD. So <clears throat> the outline is basically. Just briefly, I will just talk about what basically is U.S. metamorphism and eclogites are all about, although all of you know that. Then the geology of the study area, the objectives, then the results and inferences, as well as uh, the limitation of the studies. These are the things I'll be talking about. <clears throat> so uh, U.S.P. or ultra-high pressure metamorphism can be defined as when the metamorphism takes place at a pressure range of 2.7, above 2.7 GPA and the temperature, although generally it is from above 600 degree, but sometimes uh, we have seen in, in places where the, the US metamorphism can take place at a temperature as low as 520 to 530 degree temperature as well. Mostly the uh, oceanic crustal protolith and sometimes the continental uh, part of the continental crust also associated with mafic and ultramafic rocks. Then is an unusually dense metamorphic rock. Uh, the typically basaltic composition, the main two constituent or diagnostic minerals are omphacite, that is sodium bearing clinopyroxene, and uh, pyroprich uh, garnet. These two are the characteristics of ec eclogetic rocks. And some USP means high pressure polymorphs of quartz, maybe it's in, uh, say, quasite, <coughs> can also be present in ultra high pressure eclogites. Then the tectonic settings, one is basically will be low temperature and high pressure eclogites, mostly from in the USP metamorphic terrains. They are thought to de derive mostly from subduction tectonics and from blue schist, although from continent, although, although in case of continental eclogites nowadays, it's saying that the, a, a blue schist uh, origin is not always necessary. Then median temperature uh, that derives from amphibolites, then high temperature eclogites. <laughs> where the geo geotherm is abnormally hot and so in most cases it derives from mafic granulites or mafic mag it can derive from mafic magma as well. Uh, this is the global distribution of eclogites. More or less there are at least uh, 20, uh, or, although not necessarily always USP, but 20, at least 20 major USP uh, terrains have been identified so far in the and I think this is a uh, the st study from 2004. Maybe now it is much, uh, maybe slightly more than 20 localities. Anyway, and in the Himalaya, the eclogites <coughs> uh, or the uh, high pressure uh, eclogites, uh, no, not necessarily always ultra high pressure eclogites, can be divided into two parts. One is the basically present in the western segment of the Himalaya. One is in the Pakistan, that is the Kagan Valley. Then Somuradi, which what uh, I'll be talking about to some extent, then uh, Stark Valley also, that or uh, in, in, in the Western Himalaya. And in the in case of Eastern Himalaya, there, there is, uh, in India, there in Sikkim and Bhutan, and in Nepal, like Arun River Valley and Ahmad Rhine Massif. Now, the basic difference between these two eclogites are the Eastern eclogites are orthopyroxene bearing, and they, are, uh, they have a granulitic, strong granulite overprint which is lacking in the Western uh, eclogites. And uh, the study also suggests that the exhumation rate of the Western eclogites are much faster. And the uh, uh, pressure of uh, metamorphism is also much higher in comparison to 
the eastern eclogites the eastern eclogites are basically retrograded eclogites they are they do not have the uh, characteristic signatures of uh, eclogitic assemblage left in them only few relics but mostly retrograded same is the case for somurari also only few samples or few uh, one or two locations where the pristine eclogitic rocks are uh, can be obtained or sampled otherwise it is mostly a retrograded eclogite <clears throat> then the study area this uh, geological map of the uh, map of eastern ladakh that is trans himalaya it's taken from everton stick now the somurari uh, it's basically it's a, so called as a map structure it is bounded by two faults one is the zilla fault towards its uh, northwest northwest and towards its southwest lies the karzo fault these two separates these two faults separate the somurari nape from the zilla tophilitic melanges and the uh, Larak magmatic arc, as well as the ophiolites, the ophiolites basically, which are remnant of the Tethian oceanic crust prior to subduction. <clears throat> and then to the east, as lies some the, the some Cambro Ordovician granites are also present, as well as the Tethian shelf sediments. Now, basically, the Somurari is a uh, orthonize and paranizes uh, uh, means granitic nizes and paranizes, and the eclogites or the retrograded eclogites are. embedded as mafic enclaves within them which you, you can also see in the photographs to your right and the uh, this uh, puganize or the one part of the puganize that is a cambro ordovician cambro cambro ordovician granitic protolith the age is like 450 to 500 million years and the source for uh, the mafic eclogites is so far it means based on geochemical studies carried out by various authors they suggest they are the Volcanics related to the Panjal Trap is one most likely source for this uh, mafic or the mafic enclaves, which are later metamorphosed or ultra high pressure metamorphosed during the subduction of the Indian continent uh, during the uh, Himalayan collisional orogeny, and these mafic enclaves uh, were metamorphosed into ultra high pressure eclogites, and then during exhumation they got retrograded. So basically, most of the eclogitic samples. Uh, that we see in the somurari that are retrograded eclogites and only few maybe in in some in say for example in this case the samples we have collected only the sample location that is 7x that can be seen as a purely composed of mostly garnet and opus opusite uh, no simplectites almost no simplectites or, or breakdown products are present but in the rest of the cases along with opusite and garnet amphiboles and zoisites and simplectites and uh, i mean sand evidences of breakdown reaction that are widespread in most of the samples so i would prefer to say as we call them as retrograded eclogites or retrograded metabasic enclaves <clears throat> so this is about the background and we have sampled across the study area another thing is that as far as somori irari region is concerned it is basically it's a high altitude desert so uh, you just take your sample wherever the samples are available whenever means wherever there is an exposure and there are some uh, the exposure where it can be sampled you take the samples uh, it is not means the it is not you can make an ideal sampling like across the strike uh, strike and then at equal distance and all that that is not always possible in this region anyway but there are the number of uh, exposures are or mafic enclave mafic uh, uh, meta metabasic or retrograde eclogite enclaves are there there are many actually but many of them are retrograded also now some background information the evolution of somurari now the metamorphic evolution of somurari has been studied in detail by so many workers there are so many papers so i'll just try to give a gist of all this uh, basically uh, there are you can say there are four different events of metamorphism one is the prograde metamorphism that is related to the subduction then the peak high pressure to ultra high pressure metamorphism that took place during the uh, maximum subduction of the in indian uh, continent that is say for, from from 2.5 gpa to 2.7 gpa at a temperature of 600 to 650 although there are some other studies which suggest a slight lower temperature then <clears throat> the near isothermal near isothermal decompression during its rapid exhumation at uh, uh, around 1 to 1.5 kilowatt and around 580 degree uh, 580 plus minus 50 degree centigrade then there is a i have a study such there is a 
high temperature overprint also that is at like 0.7 to 0.9 kilobar uh, gpa pressure and around 680 to 720 degrees centigrade and then the final retrogression to green schist uh, conditions then uh, the petrochronology means metamorphism along with uh, uranium red geochronology and later on also some monazite geochronology suggests that the is it's, uh, it's uh, the uh, subduction was pretty steep then uh, the timing of subduction and accretion of india with ladakh are more or less the same then uh, the integrated metamorphic and thermochronology suggests a rapid exhumation of the uh, somurari in the order to 7 to 12 mm per year then if you see this uh, pt path which is combination of pt path by uh, many uh, uh, studies that you can say there means uh, the funny thing is that most of the sample most in most cases the pt evolution has done from the same locality means the almost the same samples but to generalize you can say see that there is a progressive path then uh, this uh, high pressure to ultra high pressure uh, metamorphic stage followed by a near isothermal decompression then a slightly if you say there is a slight curvature towards the right towards the temperature uh, in increasing temperature that is the high temperature overprint and finally the retrogression to green schist conditions so four metamorphic events we can uh, envisage then before we carry out our uh, lattice paper orientation studies of different minerals mostly ompersite we, we did some chemical analysis also through epma and there uh, uh, sensulato ompersite and uh, in most cases although there are presence of zd rich parts also but they are very rare or and in some cases only present in the core of some uh, clinopyroxenes these are uh, taken from two samples which we included in our uh, ebsd analysis then petrography based on petrography uh, as we can we can divide them into three types of eclogites uh, depending on the phase fractions of uh, garnet and ompersite type 1 that is the sample 7x which doesn't really have any symplectites or breakdown reactions very uh, little amount of hornblende uh, amphibole and uh, uh, epidote and all that uh, ompersite and garnet are 25 to 20 to 25% then type 2 the breakdown starts the in, there are increase in um, uh, the amount of symplectites and uh, breakdown reactions sodic pyroxene uh, converts into more sodic calcic varieties so the calcic amphiboles uh, transfers into calcic amphiboles uh, amphibole breaks down into epidote and all that and the phase fractions of garnet and ompersite also comes down and then finally very retrograded or type 3 kind of a uh, retrograde eclogites where the ompersite uh, phase fraction is very uh, low and in most cases in the uh, the bottom right of the photograph there are basically uh, the Uh, mean, uh, means retrograded minerals like actinolite and chlorite uh, are uh, formed at the expense of uh, their high pressure counterparts and uh, amphiboles and pyroxenes and all that so basically depending on the phase fractions on garnet and ompersite we can say uh, divide them into three types mostly type 1 is very fresh uh, almost least amount of retrogression then type 2 intermediate retrogression and type 3 that is very retrograded <coughs> some phase maps that that we uh, phase maps uh, by ebsd you can see the presence of garnet the, the orange color minerals are garnet the blues are quartz and the green are ompersite now uh, now we want to uh, before you talk about the lattice preferred orientation or, or the um, gain boundary misorientation of the ompersite to understand the deformation mechanism slip systems and as as well as its we are to know that uh, first the show that uh, means how deformed or how much distortion this uh, ompersites really have and at the same time uh, visually we want to show that how the amount of ompersite also decreases from type 1 to type 2 so that is one parameter that is called called as the grain orientation spread grain orientation spread of a particular grain is basically the difference in misorientation between each pixel within that grain is measured then the average misorientation counted then how the average misorientation varies from the uh, average misorientation of all the all the grains that uh, that is present within that phase so basically higher the grain orientation spread you can say the higher the lattice distortion and indirectly you can say that these grains are more deformed <clears throat> and and secondly what you can see from type 1 like from left top to uh, bottom right you can also see that the 
phase fractions of omphocytes are coming down, uh, are getting, uh, it is more and more, uh, it is less and less. And in the last two uh, samples, even the last sample, there are hardly uh, any omphocyte present because most of them has uh, been retrograded into first first into amphibole, then later to even uh, tremulate and chloride, uh, actinolite and chloride also. So this is also measured to visually show you the, how type one from the, I mean, the omphocyte also changes in terms of its uh, fractions in from type one to type three echlogites. Now the omphocyte of LPO of omphocyte and how the omphocyte LPO can be used to infer a strain raising basically it's the 001 and 010 axis. The distribution of the 001 and 010 axis are uh, depending on their distribution we can Differentiate it from L type to LS type to SL type to S type. I don't go into detail what is L type and to S type because you all know. So basically, from prolate fabric to oblate fabric, depending on the uh, distribution of 001 and 010, we can infer. And in most cases, carried out studies carried out by various workers in various in different parts of the world, starting from Alps and uh, uh, Tibet also. Then uh, there is a very recent paper by uh, Hafizur Rahman et al. from of, uh, the uh, the uh, I think uh, that uh, Kagan Valley. Now they have also shown that the the means the means the, uh, the eclogite which which represents the peak metamorphic condition or the USG right the fresh eclogites. They basically uh, show the L type uh, fabric, and as the uh, PT you know, pressure of metamorphism decreases or with with exhumation. The, the L type uh, slowly trans, uh, changes into SL and then S type. So this is one basic on which we will try to classify our uh, omphocyte LEP. And and you also will show that this is not I means there are many other complications, and this we'll also discuss in the following slides. This is the LP of omphocyte. Now, please, the, 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 uh, the second from the top to your left, here you can see that the 001 is uh, almost parallel to the uh, XY plane, that is uh, parallel to the lineation and parallel to the foliation plane. And the 010 is uh, normal or perpendicular to the foliation plane. That means it's a uh, typical L type fabric. And this 7XA is a type 1 echlogite. As I have shown earlier, basically mostly composed of garnet and opposite, very less amount of retrogression and breakdown and all that. And <clears throat> apart from this, there are the samples like the samples to the bottom of your left. Here you can see that uh, there, in, instead of polar distribution, the, it is more like a girdle distribution, which uh, you, you can infer that it is more like a mixed fabric that is LS or SL type for like type 2, most, mostly. But in some cases, uh, say for example, the last one, which is the most retrograded samples, uh, among the most retrograded samples and few others, the LPO doesn't really make any sense. It doesn't give any meaningful uh, inferences. So we can see the type 1, the 7X, that is uh, typically showing the L-type fabric. And for type 2, it transition from LS to some uh, to S type, but type 3 doesn't really have any uh, meaningful uh, lattice preferred orientation. Then, to, uh, since uh, in uh, some of the samples, uh, it, it is giving us a mixed kind of uh, signals like LS and SL, and some doesn't really giving us any kind of uh, any signals. We also carried out a grain boundary misorientation analysis, low angle grain boundary misorientation analysis, means. Uh, means that the misorientation along its major three axis, uh, major axis are uh, plotted, uh, the, the low angle gain one. It, it helps us to see that which uh, uh, means, along which axis the uh, means maximum uh, slip has taken place. Now in most cases, uh, uh, say for starting from the uh, uh, second from your left to <clears throat> you know, second and third and the, uh, in the uh, bottom left to you can see that uh, it, is, it changes like from uh, sample 7x and 1y the 001 axis is uh, 
more active uh, activity along the 001 plane because uh, 001 axis because the the, the pole to the 001 the maximum concentration is shown in the pole to the 001 that is the 010 and in some cases it is just the opposite pole to 010 that is the 00 plane is getting more uh, means uh, 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 means the miss orientation is concentrated along that and on the basis of this uh, we can uh, say which basically uh, more or less corroborate with our uh, finding in the LP or uh, means whether the uh, means the uh, polar or random distribution and uh, polar or gradual distribution along the 001 or the C axis in cases of the L type fabric and uh, this polar gradually uh, turns into gradual kind of distribution as you as you go from type one to type two and for type three it doesn't really make any sense like this it is a more or less like a random distribution the last one the sample six y <clears throat> then along with uh, although we have uh, done uh, crystal it means lq analysis for garnet also but garnet didn't really give us any meaningful lq so i haven't shown it here and now uh, apart from opposite we also did for it did for quartz also now for quartz the most important and most interesting thing is that there are two samples which shows the prism c slip which basically indicates uh, uh, a, a high temperature condition sample 8xb and 8yb and uh, apart from them mostly we can see uh, mostly we can see uh, prism or basal a slips which are characteristics of <clears throat> much uh, lesser temperature say for example say like from 400 to 550 or 600 degree centigrade although it is not always wise to correlate the slip systems with directly with the temperature but it is more or less uh, fits the bill <clears throat> so what we see that uh, from for Ompas, from Ompas side we have seen that there are three types of uh, eclogites uh, depending on the degree of retrogression type one basically show an l type fabric type two uh, shows something like ls to sl type of fabric and type three doesn't show any kind of fabric and as far as uh, the quartz are concerned, mostly most of the samples show basal or prism A slip and uh, two two and you can say two maybe sample one Y B also you can say it is also have a very strong component of prism C slip. So both high temperature as well as uh, medium temperature uh, uh, slip system can be inferred from the LP of quartz. Now, now we want to in interpret this LPO in terms of the uh, metamorphic evolution or the uh, PT evolution that we have uh, uh, obtained from previous studies. Now, the type 1 umpas or type 1 eclogite, that is the fresh, freshest of all eclogite, that is uh, the sample 7x, which shows the L-type fabric. Now, this can be uh, assigned to the peak metamorphic conditions. Uh, say from 2.5 to 2.7 kilobar when during the peak uh, maximum subduction or peak metamorphism this fabric has uh, uh, developed and this L-type fabric will suggest a constrictional strain regime that means a very uh, means a constrictional strain regime during the peak subduction of the Indian trade so uh, what some previous studies also suggest that the fast exhumation uh, just subsequent to the peak metamorphism has to be, uh, because it exits into a very narrow channel and it's uh, is kind of squeezed out very fast. So that also explains the development of L-type fabric. Now, the type two and type three omphocyte, which are like various degrees of retrogression and alteration, which basically um, represents the near isothermal decompression stages from like in antibolite condition to uh, and which then goes up to the high temperature overprint part. Now there are two things. One thing is that you try to interpret the fabric in terms of a strain regime that uh, uh, since we are getting LS type of fabric, so we can say that it is from uh, constriction transition into a more like a platinum strain or general strain. That is one thing. But we have also shown that some of the samples doesn't show any meaningful LPO. Now, what can be the reason behind that? The reason behind that, uh, I, I have pointed out the reasons in the next slides also, but I will just uh, discuss it. Because you have to take uh, account of the few things. One is that once the breakdown is 
has started I means breakdown reaction has started and synthetic types are forming and fluid infiltration is going on the I mean, any lpo of a mineral or any given phase depends on the dislocation that is uh, being uh, operated uh, during any kind of deformation so but once the fluid activity takes place and the breakdown reactions it takes place fluid will fluid has a tendency to uh, help heal those uh, means uh, the zones of anastropy that are found or or where the dislocation density has been maximum those part they will tend to heal that and then diffusion also comes into picture uh, picture now one once once this diffusion process which is a very integral part of symplectite formation uh, or and at the second and the thirdly the breakdown of the ompacite ompacite is breaking down and forming uh, in some cases amphi amphibole and sometimes from more sodic ompacite to sodic calcic ompacite basically ompacite to diopside so these are the three factors that also we taken into consideration before we try to make any interpretations in terms of uh, strain regime so yeah in one way we can say that okay since we are getting some ls2 sl type fabric in some samples so once the means the uh, peak subduction and the uh, uh, rapid exhumation through a, through the narrow channel takes place and it comes to a uh, relatively shallower depth in a collisional thickening when the uh, it uh, comes below the existing uh, uh, indo eurasian collisional zone then means uh, and the and its following subduction uh, means the following uh, exhumation is more like more uh, at a low angle uh, path then flattening strain uh, have may have prevailed but at the same time you have to take into consideration that whether you are interpreting the lpo of two ompacites or not how many of them are really ompacites and how many of them then have broken broken down to diopside and at the same time the presence of symplectites and fluid infiltrations and all that so both these things has to be taken into account now the thing why we have studied taken uh, lp of quartz also because quartz is not a ideal mineral that will give you means any ultra high pressure rock or high pressure rock quartz is the least uh, likely mineral to uh, be a signature of any high pressure metamorphism or earlier metamorphic event because the fabric of quartz changes very fast along with changing pressure and temperature so in most cases the quartz will basically show you the uh, means the last metamorphic events or among the last two metamorphic events so one is one thing is very tempting to interpret this sea slip in quartz with the high pressure or the uhp uh, metamorphic conditions but you know it is very like uh, unlikely that a quartz that was formed during that usv condition or or high pressure since it's quartz not quartzite and it uh, retained that fabric even after this all two three metamorphic events is very unlikely so we are more akin to interpret this sea slip or high temperature prism sea slip in quartz with the high temperature overprint event that is related to collisional thickening that took place something somewhere around 45 to 48 million years so i'm really sorry i forgot to completely forgot to talk about the ages and all that anyway the peak metamorphism is from 51 to 52 and then the isothermal decompression from 45 to 50 and then this around 45 to 42 this collisional thickening and the high temperature overprint takes place followed by the green sea set 29 to 31 so this peak metamorphism uh, so this uh, is koshik this is yes. the age which is already published or yeah 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 No, 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 no. These are not my ages, sir. These are all published. All the metamorphic, metamorphic path and the ages I am showing, they are all published, sir. There are like ten, fifteen means uh, so papers. So what are uh, what are the what are the ages? I mean, which systematics they have used for this? Sir, uh, initially they have done mostly uh, uranium date of uh, uh, recon, but one study by Donaldson in geology they have done it in terms of petrochronology. Means they have shown that that this recon is present within a ompacite. or uh, within a ompacite that is present within the mantle of the garnet so they have really you know correlated to those ages with uh, metamorphic events and some oh. argon argon dates also have done been done by i think dc go had carried out some argon argon dates so with with I means so uh, compare it with the temperatures so you know when you are talking you're talking about biotite uh, if it is giving 29 to 30 million years you can say that the system must have came to a temperature to like 400 degrees centigrade 350 degrees yeah, centigrade because argon argon date yeah, yeah. Is, uh, closer temperature is low yes, so yeah, yeah. what what so the, the high temperature yes yes yes, yes. Yeah. so so the younger ages like the green sea stages that i'm showing 
I think most of them are from the DC West paper. They have carried out argon argon ages. But the uh, higher uh, the means higher conditions, there are mostly uranium lead of zircon. Although I would like to point out that even maybe uranium lead zircon may not be the ideal uh, character mm. all, always for metamorphic events because you know uh, how thick the ring is uh, mm. being developed during the metamorphism is very important. So mm. nowadays people are t- doing for rutile and uh, titanite and all that. So I think okay. they, they are, those things like that they have a closer temperature of 550 to 600. So maybe they are more reliable nowadays. But I am not aware of any such study that has been published in from Somurari, maybe in uh, near future. So currently all we have is uranium lead and argon argon. Mm, okay. okay. And finally the A slip that is kind of basal or a, a prism A slip, which is the most common of uh, yeah, uh, the slip system in quartz shown in Somurari, the echloids, as well as in, you know, in the Pugani, some extensive quartz LQ has been done by Dotto and Mukherjee, that is one really uh, extensive and very elaborate paper published in Technophysics. They have uh, painstakingly uh, means done a lot of samples of, in, in quartz and, uh, and quartz uh, slip systems. And there is another paper by Long et al. that is in Tectonics. That is also the same, means the, of the Puganite, that the host Puganite that I'm talking about, quartz of the host Puganite that has been studied ex- extensively by, by these two papers, very recent papers. One is Dipto's paper, I think, was in 21 and Long is starting in 22. So they have talked in detail about the slip system present in the host Puganites. I am I am talking about the slip systems or quartz micro quartz slip system present in the uh, metabasic enclaves that are present within the Puganites. So these are again these uh, the LPO we are getting from quartz. We can correlate this. Means I would prefer to correlate them with this later high temperature overprint event and uh, followed by retrogression events. I would say that this quartz LPO has nothing to do with peak, peak metamorphic conditions because it is very unlikely that the quartz will hold its uh, means high pressure slip system even after so many deformation events and retrogressions and all that. So the inferences that I have talked is uh, it does, since we are we miss the sample 7x which is the freshest of eclogite that is on the L-type fabric we can see say that the Peak metamorphism, deepest continental subduction, or subsequent rapid exhumation TMCC took place in a constrictional regime. Uh, the subsequent exhumation shallow address more like with a within plain strain regime, but with a pinch of salt because uh, because you know omphasite LPO has weakened due to breakdown reactions, simplified formation, protein filtration that I have already discussed in detail. The most retrograde samples may suggest that the, this is, may have accommodated stain by grain size sensitive process like. Diffusion creep means uh, once the diffusion creep uh, comes into picture, then and the healing of dislocation uh, means zones of dislocation uh, or intense dislocation boundaries are start to getting healed. The LPO will weaken the lattice paper orientation, will the strength of the LPO will weaken. A slight uh, transition from 001 uh, axis and pole to 1001 plane to 1000 have been seen to from more most pristine to most retrograde eclogite. This is nothing new, means uh, nothing novel about this because m- many studies have shown the same thing. But we are really expecting some uh, characteristic high pressure slip system that we haven't uh, uh, we could not obtain from any of the samples, as I have uh, discussed earlier. That the quartz LPO does not bear any signature of EHT metamorphism, but may have modified developed during HT overprint and green cyst retrogression. And finally, uh, the breakdown reaction and simplectite formation in omphacite appear to be a significant factor affecting the rapid exhumation of the TMCC. So what we plan to do, means we plan to do, I, I hope I'll be able to do it in uh, near future that we'll just, you know, Target the simplex types now for EBSD analysis and index like both amphibole and pyroxenes, like whether they are epitaxial or topotaxial, what is the relationship between uh, them during the and the breakdown and all that sense, whether so this can give us any uh, any insight into the strain regime and also strain regime vis a vis a particular pressure temperature condition. This is a future uh, work that I have in mind and I hopefully I'll be able to pull it off in near future, <laughs> hopefully. But so far means what the take home, if you ask me that what is the take home from this study, one is thing is that if the if, if the eclogite is fresh, if you are lucky to get a very fresh eclogite in omphacite, means the EBSD is a very, um, very good proxy and it, it gives a lot of information, not only the slip systems, the deformation mechanisms and the stain regimes. 
but once the breakdown and the retrogression uh, starts to year then the you know lpo or deformation mechanism of the lpo uh, has to be done very carefully everything has to be taken into account and uh, that's it now it's open to you all please ask whatever you want. i will try my best to answer if i don't know the answer i will simply say that i don't know <laughs> thank you dr shen uh, the court talk was quite insightful and mm -hmm. thank you for sticking to time as yeah. well oh yeah so the floor is open for questions mm -hmm. uh, uh, please go ahead if you can just raise your hand and then uh, we can do it one by one professor chotobadhai please uh, kaushik hmm. i have a uh, just a few queries i mean yes, one yes. is that uh, hmm. have you seen this uh, when you are showing such clear uh, evidences of say l type fabric or ls type fabric hmm. Hmm. have you seen anything like that in the microscope no 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 not at all no uh, only thing is only thing i can say that only one sample that is sample 3x a that was very good. i mean the garnet porphyroblast and the and the quartz tails in the shadows like quartz tails were pretty well developed but that is only in one sample only one sample yeah, but don't, the, don't hmm. you expect this kind of things to be also yeah. petrographically uh so the, the thing is that means uh, means these uh, these eclogoids that i am talking about means this metamorphosis ec eclogoids most of the thing in they are really massive eclogoids means they are not very well foliated or the foliate foliation is not that strong means you have to uh, only after uh, say cutting three parallel sections then uh, tracing them or you do ams we can uh, figure out the k1 k1 uh, sorry or the exit plane in most cases like the more pristine it is and for retrograded samples the fabric is very pretty well developed and uh, as far as this uh, myelonitic fabric if you are talking about that anything that resembles a myelonitic fabric or a uh, that can be interpreted in terms of a l tectonite or something like that uh, only one or two uh, instances where the very uh, prominent this porphyroblast and the stain shadow of quartz has developed but overall yes the ompasite do show a preferred orientations but once the symplectite uh, means the zones of symplectite comes means when the means the breakdown of ompasites uh, starts to take place it goes pretty haywire means means the pristine ompasites or the ompasites that are not broken down and some in case of amphibole also that is pneumatic they have a very strong preferred orientation but the breakdown zone or the zones where the breakdown is more prominent or the simplex types is more there are no such fabrics another thing i wanted to mm. ask is that uh, you are talking about lot of simplex types so what mm. are the simplex types compositionally are they uh, what what do are they producing i mean is it so a there are, uh, uh, no uh, cpx simplex type or something there are, there are two types of simplex types basically one simplex type is basically the thing that that, that plagioclase diopside simplex type that is basically okay. uh, related to the high temperature over it and it also signifies that the portulit was eclogitic and the second side of simplex is basically pyroxene amphibole and uh, to some extent garnet sometime also means that the, these simplex types are mostly developed along the ring of the garnet uh, and uh, because and, because yes. generally if you see in granulites also i have not seen much eclogitic mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in granulites you see frequently that when yes. there is, you are showing a uh is i mean um, isothermal decompression mm, yes. so in isothermal decompression you very often see say mm. garnet breaking down to cps yes, yes 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 those are there those are there actually uh, that paper, that paper is currently under review that we have also communicated so hopefully something will come out of that for that simplex types also we have done some pt zero uh, section modeling also and there are at least two different types of simplex types uh, colonies that are formed during two different metamorphic events the plagioclase so, dioxide is definitely during the high temperature overprint and this uh, means garnet breaking down and cpx uh, into amphibole and cpx so this is this is this is more uh, widespread this uh, kind of simplex types but yeah if you ask me that simply there are two types of simplex types one is uh, one we infer that is related to the near isothermal decompression and second is related to the high temperature overprint another thing is uh, just last question yes, that sir. is uh, why why do you think there is no s fabric in this uh, dominant s fabric in this uh, uh, eclogites sir uh, 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 as far as the foliation is concerned means, means the host uh, 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 let, let me try and uh, 
explain it to you you improve the best of my ability the okay, first of all he, the host puganize the host granting nice or some in some case it is paranize also that is present that is well foliated okay oh. now within that this mafic eclogize is present oh. in most cases they resemble a budding you can say the oh. most cases and the margin of this eclogize this margin of the eclogize is very well foliated oh. and the center of the eclogize are pretty massive now oh. if you ask me that why don't you just study more more on the foliated part so that you can make interpretation on the I mean the strain regime in a more clear cut manner the, oh. the, this foliated parts are retrograded okay uh, if you want to know about the peak metamorphic conditions no so but you know, hmm. study the type 3 eclogites that you have mentioned these are mm-hmm. retro retrograded very retrograded right? so even they are also you are uh, your ebsd study shows that there is no s type uh, you know that s dominated no no uh, no no sir i think there is one uh, one uh, means that the ebsd is showing the distribution of the crystallographic axis means whether they are in concentration in in a certain direction in polar distribution or gardel distribution of any particular crystallographic axis oh. now the sample can very well be foliated oh. and foliation means the tech or the visible mesoscopic foliations uh, is a different thing and the second thing is that means what i am trying to say most of the time is the foliation i am seeing oh. and the lpo i am showing i am showing the lpo of omphasite oh. but the foliation i am seeing they are not necessarily most of them are not omphasite anymore no, that is true that mm. is that has been that yeah. has retrograded to some other yeah 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 and retrograded to some yeah and second thing is that even if they are omphasite sensus is still there but they have if the diffusion creep uh, dominates at a later stage during the simplicate formation and all that then the lpo will weaken again means there are many oh. other factors apart from structure that is Even controlling the lpo when if we take your argument that is fine mm-hmm. but my question is when mm-hmm. there is a do you so there that much of continental uh, subduction as well as thickening mm-hmm. is a, you know there is a subduction channel kind of thing mm-hmm. you, the, then your uh lpo show that there is no pure flattening fabric or even not a general flattening is not dominant yes is yes yes that, that, no, no 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 sir that's exactly what i'm trying to say that's what i have emphasized mostly that whenever the samples are pristine hmm. the fabric is truly representing the tectonic setting or the strain regime but hmm. if, or, or, when you are showing when you are seeing that s type or ls type fabric where many other people from many other places have sh- shown that that when the you know during retrogression or, or during a later stage of exhumation of eclogite the omphasite basically shows this flattening strain or uh, or the fabric that is related to flattening strain what i am saying that uh, that it is very uh, likely to uh, means interpret in terms of key by it was l type and now it is L, ls type to s type what i am saying that the l type is fine it's a pristine omphasite i know i am just seeing the cp of omphasite and all that but when when this mixed fabric or the transient fabric is coming mm. ebsd cannot tell me that whether one particular grain is a omphasite or it is a diopsite or it cannot be it cannot tell me whether uh, the, the, this diffusion creep has some role to play so i am saying that i am very uh, reluctant to interpret straight forward in terms of strain regime in cases of this retrograded eclogite i am saying yeah. that these uh, these factors has to be taken into consideration first okay uh, okay i understand i am not interpreting actually actually i am pretty uh, reluctant tend to interpret i have means in the paper also i have seen i have said that although these fabrics show this but these factors has to be evaluated further with whether this ls is because of seriously fatigue strain or because simply because of you know uh, simplicate formation and all that breakdown and all that we don't know that i don't know that okay mm. okay thank you Mm. Uh, Dr. Bhupesh Behar, if you can. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, all. So, since we are attending a group, like uh, my colleagues are with me, so they want to curious to know some questions. So, can you can they ask? Yes, of course. Please go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, Bhupesh. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a few questions related to your misorientation uh, yeah. axis. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, this uh, your uh, slide with quartz mm. orientation analysis. So you said that you have dominance of uh, basal A and prism A slip system, right? In uh, most of the samples, means uh, means uh, means if you say that uh, means only one sample, two sample, you will say the prism A slip is very dominant. 
and one the basal is very dominant uh, and uh, otherwise it's more like the a sleeps yeah and in two samples only in two samples the c sleep is very very prominent okay but you you like uh, you can uh, say this for in general for all the quartz you have or just for particular sample we have analyzed i think six to seven samples from the meta basic rocks in the enclave oh, okay. that are present and so we can i can talk about that but as far as the host that is the more granitic gneiss or the ferronite that is present that quartz is very uh, extensively studied by uh, by in, uh, by dr deep prodatto and samuel mukherjee one paper and nigel long and matthew con they have in another paper but they i think they have also shown that in most cases it is basal or prism basically but in some in some cases prism c sleep is also dominant in some samples yeah okay because in in examples that you shown i can mm. i i seen only uh, basically one example with basal sleep yeah so yeah yeah sure 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 yes yes yes, yes 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 i completely ag agree with you if you can allow me to just show it again yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm i completely agree with you and the reason i can also explain I means if you say that like these the, are the two samples that are present to the right in like the top one and the bottom one they are pretty good like means uh, the prism c slip slip and the and the in between middle you can say that's prism a slip yes yeah yeah that prism yeah but yeah. then yeah i was wondering and about the basal a uh, because i see maybe this one the, only the top one only the top one maybe yeah and uh, the one uh, you know basically in this first one i would mm. say you have a romp maybe yeah, romp yeah, yeah. Uh, romp yes 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 yeah and the second one actually is only one with the with the, with the basal a basal yeah and the, and then again prism a slip is dominant in the third one yeah so mm. yeah for for prism mm -hmm. c and prism a i would mm. say yeah you you have some evidence mm. but maybe not so much for basal a and considering that that some um, some people are even like in 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 Kilian's paper for mm. example uh, they have some kind of uh, like discussion mm -hmm. of unlikeliness of yeah, the okay. uh, of, yes, of yes. a uh, sleep system to, to mm -hmm. be at least frequent uh, mm. okay. in natural okay. conditions right okay. so yeah okay. that's okay. Okay. yeah okay 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 mm. yeah thanks yeah. and uh, cool. another thanks. question about uh, misorientation of uh, uh, that's uh, on phosphate Hmm. Uh, so in your paper, actually, there is stated that uh, your sample 3xA hmm. uh, indicates uh, one, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 sleep, hmm. which hmm. Is, you said it's close to uh, 1, 1, 0 and uh, 0, 1, 0. So uh, is that basically, did you want to refer to 7xA or... No, I think 3x, 3x, I may, I am not sure, I, because as far as 7xa is concerned and also the uh, 6ya, I think the 6 means the, uh, means the concentration of 6, uh, the, this misorientation in, in certain axes are very prominent. But if you see like sample 1ya and then like 8xb, means there are like, uh, has to be multiple uh, uh, slip system has to be operated, um, has to be yeah, yeah. operational. So I think yeah. if you are talking about 7XA, it, it means I am talk, talking about 7XA, then it's perfectly fine, I think, I hope. Yes. And yeah. uh, for 6YA, it, it is also perfectly fine. But as far mm -hmm. as I have seen, shown, and I have also said in the inferences also, you know, this means that whatever we are talking, means even I am talking about this interpretation of omphasite LPO. Mm -hmm. means what I have said that uh, means in future studies, this means this retrogression of omphasite or breaking down of the omphasite has to be taken into consideration in a more real way because, you know, yeah. we are doing some misorientation axis, but we don't know whether diffusion creep has a huge role to play or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I won't be, means although I have, uh, means uh, I have made this interpretation on basis of the misorientation I have done, but I will also, at the same time, I myself will say that as far as the misorientation of the omphasite is concerned, 7x is perfectly fine. Oh, no problem with that. But once yes. the retrogression or the or the degree of retrogression increases, now I think uh, means the, if the LPO makes some senses, then uh, the misorientation axis might also make some sense. What one thing we we, we have tried 
later that we have separated some omphasite grain uh, depending on the grain orientation spread also you know say for mm -hmm. example the grain orientation spread which are higher than 2.5 degree we have considered them as a maybe relic grains and recrystallized grains like just following the method of Andrew Cross although he has done it for quartz but but, but that was weird. but uh, i didn't get any meaningful uh, mm -hmm. uh, results from that i haven't got any yeah, yeah, my my remark was basically related to to your mm. paper because yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. explained and showed this nice example of seven x a, mm. which is yeah, nicely lying in one mm -hmm. zero one that the mm -hmm. maximum. Mm -hmm. But then in paper you stated three x a as a basically example okay. of uh, so okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. I was wondering if this is maybe like uh, okay, three x a. No, three x is more. I think three x we consider is near to that. Uh, means uh, this uh, 0, 1, 0 axis or the uh, means the pole to 0, 0, 0, 1 or something like that. Uh, means, yeah, uh, between uh, them and even towards 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah, MUD is also pretty high, means that 3 and the concentration is also at a certain, only a certain point. So you can say that somewhere near this. That's why I'm here. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this is also the 6Y is perfectly fine, but, but for the rest, I think, at least for, for these, I think these multiple slip system has to be taken into account. For yeah, this. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, I just thought that... Uh, for yeah, yeah, thank, thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, that is a very valid yeah, question and it's a valid yeah. point, actually. That actually is a very, very valid point that you have uh, raised. And... Uh, but yeah, I, okay. like I said that I have tried some uh, other thing, you know, <laughs> I tried to differentiate them on terms of GOS and like if we can distinguish between recrystallized and relic, but uh, for, as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned, I haven't got any meaningful result. I think yeah. this simplified has to be means addressed first, <laughs> means uh, either you get a fresh eclogite and interpret on them, but in most cases in somebody eclogites, I think it's better to, means what I would like to do that concentrate on simplified first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Dipto, kick over. Um, um, <clears throat> hi, sir. I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm also fine. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry because I had another meeting to attend, so I I have mm. joined a bit late. No, no, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly, it is really nice to see you after such a long time <laughs> anyone else please Jyotima, if there is yeah, anyone any any further questions yeah. from yeah, about the... questions uh, like what is oh, the dominant okay. slip systems of omphasite the dominant slip system of opposite as i have shown you in the it, 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 it depends on the uh, strain regime it depends on the strain regime and what is what is this one huh. this one yeah 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 okay. Means uh, if yes. the uh, zero zero one has a polar distribution parallel to the foliation plane and zero one zero has a gradual distribution normal to the foliation uh, foliation plane, then it's a polar strain. And just the opposite happens when it becomes to becomes object that zero zero one is becomes uh, has it shows a gradual distribution parallel to foliation. Zero one zero is polar distribution normal to foliation, and anything in between, you can say it's a uh, transitional kind of fabric. Means that is the existing knowledge about the omphasite LQ. I think these studies are mostly has been done some based on some experimental studies also. There are many studies. So this is the most standard uh, understanding of omphasite LQ. And there are many papers. I think you can start with this review paper by that I have cited. That's a very good paper. And uh, excuse me, sir. I have a question. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, so if you see the uh, omphasite CPOs, like you mm -hmm. have a bunch of figures. So if I'm not wrong, you mentioned that the CPO gets weakened as influence of this diffusion creep increases due to retrogression. If I'm not wrong, that's what I remember you were saying about the Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I am saying that, what I am saying that this L type here in, in the existing understanding of this omphasite L2 is that this transition from L type to S type takes place during the due to the change in strain regime, right? Yeah. What I am saying, what I am saying that since the intermediate kind of fabric that, that I have got in my samples, in most cases, they do not really follow this pattern either. Okay. Okay. They don't pattern, follow this pattern either. So, so that's what, although the number of grains are pretty high, it's although in all cases, I think apart from 6.5, which hardly has any emphasis, it is more, always more than 
250 to 300 so i am saying that this randomness or the weak fabric and uh, in the fabric in the, the strength of the lpo the weak, weakening of the strength of lpo maybe not only because of a, because of a changing of strain reading but more like it is more like a metamorphic metamorphism has a role to play it means breaking down of oomphocyte and fluid infiltration and all that that's what i have said it means i say that Although my, uh, I'm just coming back to this. Although uh, some of my fabric, like this fabric, you can say that yeah, okay, this uh, your zero one zero has for the polar distribution, uh, normal to foliation, and there's a girdle distribution like like that. But in some cases, like the like this one, like this one, like the top uh, top in the right corner on the bottom corner, they don't they don't make much sense. So <clears throat> what I'm uh, suggesting is trying to say that. This has to be explored. That uh, means whether it is because of this changing strain rating or because of uh, Omphocyte is breaking down to dioxide and amphibole is also forming. So, and how whether amphibole is mimicking the LPO of Omphocyte or not. So, that's what the simple test means. Uh, I, I mean, intend to do some detailed LPO of this of the simple types also in future. Maybe that, that will be a better year. But as far as the fresh echolocytes are concerned, the, with the sensor stick to Omphocyte, there is no problem. It is showing perfectly perfect L type fabric. But in Somura, getting a fresh echolocyte is not that easy, right? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Any any further question from the students or Professor Mukhopadhyay or Professor Misra? Anyone, please. Hello, Kaushik. Yes, sir. It was a nice talk. Thank you, sir. Uh, of course, you concluded that from quads, mm. you really cannot um, interpret much. No, no, I won't say interpret, interpret the ultra high pressure or high pressure condition. That's only that means the later uh, metamorphic events can be very well interpreted in terms of, in fact, quartz will be the best candidate if you want to talk about uh, yes, if, later metamorphic If you don't see any quartz fabric in, mm -hmm. in your rocks, mm -hmm. then it becomes very difficult to uh, interpret anything. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, quartz, you know, from alpha to beta quartz, uh, changeover is instantaneous. Even coesite is so difficult to preserve. Yeah, but, you know, but we, the, 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 the PT condition I have talked about or, or the EBSD analysis, I have, there are no uh, coesites. And to alpha to beta quartz, yeah, maybe from high temperature overprint, sometime it can happen at 700 degrees centigrade. Maybe the, the, that that overprint signature overprint is there since we have pledge yeah so that maybe the that's a good point actually maybe the c slip i am getting that is because of transition to alpha of alpha to beta i haven't thought about no, it site was described from you no no, I, no no yes coesite is there but I, the samples i have the indexed they, they don't they didn't have any coesite that's so it is so damn difficult to preserve coesite right mm -hmm. Yeah, no, coesites. I think it is more likely coesites are you are found in the host organized. Means it's more like quartz cells, but people have shown all the coesites must be there in the echolocytes also. Um, I I haven't seen, but yeah, it, it is known fact. Yeah, we, we, we don't see that because uh, it's so difficult. Yeah, I mean, seeing in, see in terms of Raman, I mean, uh, it is so difficult uh, to preserve them. Mm. So obviously, you cannot talk anything no, yeah. about yeah, in, in, in any case, I didn't really deal, deal I haven't de dealt with that uh, aspect in the. Mm. EBSD of coesite and, and uh, do you have any Kikuchi patterns that you can show us? Sir, uh, right now I do not have. It means that system is in the I do not have that. But if you uh, just send me your email, no, I'd be happy just... to tell you. I, I, right I, now I, I, I do not have, sir. I do not have. I do not have. I do not have. Right now I do not have. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Any other question? Professor Santunubos actually. Uh, sends his uh, excuses because he has a very bad voice. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think because of cold. So, yeah. And Sion Deep is here? He so says I hi. Yeah, Sion Deep is also here. Professor Santanu Mistra is also here. Yeah, Santanu, I talked to. I talked to Santanu. Yeah. It was really nice to see you all after, means, I don't know, <laughs> such a long time. Yeah, you should I join think... these meetings more. I think I met Santonu last year. I think Santonu and Dipto came. Uh, no, maybe last to last year. I think it was 2020. Dipto was it 2020 or 21? You and Santonu came to Wadia? No, I mean, um, I went to Wadia in yeah, 22. Yeah. And um, you two came, no? And you two came and no, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was in the. And 
Any, any other questions from anyone, from the students? Okay. All right. If not, then I thank everyone for joining in today. And also, I thank. Uh, Jyoti, uh, please also yeah. add my email to the mailing list. I will do that. I'll you are on. Okay. You, you I'll, send, I'll send you the link. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. I'll do okay. that. I'll do that. So, uh, I also thank uh, Dr. Sen for taking his time out. Uh, thank you, Santanuda. Finally, you came. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, everyone. I will see, you will get the notification for the next uh, talk sure, very sure, soon, sure. which That's is great. which would be happening in next mm. month in February. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you for joining. Thanks, and thanks for my side also. Thanks a lot. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank okay. you, Kofi. Thank you, Jyotimoy, for organizing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.